Hi, I'm Abby. I'm an active duty 68 Whiskey combat medic. I will be showing you how to perform a tactical trauma assessment. It will follow the march sequence. The first part of the tactical trauma assessment occurs in the care under fire phase. In this phase, the scene is unsafe and you must take tactical considerations into account. If still under enemy fire, you should first return fire and take cover. If they are able, direct the casualty to remain engaged as a combatant as well. In addition, direct the casualty to move to cover and apply self-aid if possible. If the casualty is not responsive or unable to move, assess the tactical situation for the best options to move the casualty or secure the site. Perform a casualty drag or carry to move the casualty to cover. Casualties should be extricated from burning vehicles or buildings and moved to places of relative safety. Do what is necessary to stop the burning process. In this phase of care, stop life-threatening external hemorrhage if tactically feasible by applying a limb tourniquet to control life-threatening external bleeding. Apply the limb tourniquet over the uniform clearly proximal to the bleeding sites. If the site of the life-threatening bleeding is not readily apparent, place the tourniquet high and tight, as proximal as possible on the injured limb and move the casualty to cover. A tourniquet is the only hemorrhage control option that should be used in care under fire. Once no longer under enemy fire, tactical field care can begin. First, establish a security perimeter and maintain tactical situational awareness. Triage casualties as required. Remove weapons and communication equipment from casualties with altered mental status immediately. Next, reassess for massive hemorrhage, the M in March, and control all sources of bleeding. If not already done, use a COTC recommended limb tourniquet to control life-threatening external hemorrhage that is anatomically amenable to tourniquet use or for any traumatic amputation applied directly to the skin two to three inches above the bleeding site. It is important that if the bleeding is not controlled with the first tourniquet, apply a second tourniquet side by side with the first. For compressible external hemorrhage not amenable to limb tourniquet use, apply a COTC recommended hemostatic dressing. If the bleeding site is amenable to use of a junctional tourniquet, immediately apply a COTC recommended junctional tourniquet. Remember, you can apply a hemostatic dressing with direct pressure if a junctional tourniquet is not available or while the junctional tourniquet is being readied for use. The next step is airway, the A in March, during which you must assess and secure the airway. Allow conscious casualties to assume any position that best protects their airway, to include sitting up. If unconscious, use a head tilt, chin lift, or jaw thrust maneuver. In addition, insert a nasopharyngeal airway in an unconscious casualty without airway obstruction and place them in the recovery position. The next step is respirations, the R in March, where you must assess respiration. First, apply a chest seal to any open chest wounds. Also, assess for tension in thorax and treat as necessary by performing a needle decompression and assessing for the success of the needle decompression. Next is circulation the C in March. You must reassess prior tourniquet application and again after each movement of the casualty. You must also assess for hemorrhagic shock as noted by altered mental status in the absence of brain injury and or a weak or absent radial pulse. The H in March stands for head injury and hypothermia. If the patient is at risk for hypothermia, you should prevent hypothermia by minimizing the casualty's exposure to the environment and employing active heating measures. If there's a suspected head injury, you must assess and document the mental status using the AVPU scale. After following the March sequence, there are several other additional treatments that should be performed. If the casualty is conscious and able to swallow and has mild to moderate pain, or if the casualty is still able to fight, administer the oral anaglesic from the combat wound medication pack. If there is moderate pain to severe pain and the casualty is not in shock, refer to a medic. If the casualty is conscious and able to swallow and has an open wound, including all penetrating injuries, administer 400 milligrams of moxifloxin, the oral antibiotic from the combat wound medication pack. If the casualty cannot swallow due to shock or is unconscious, refer to a medic. You must treat all combat wounds, inspect and dress all known wounds, assess and treat burns by applying dressings to burns and be sure to check for additional wounds, such as scalp lacerations and other wounds that may be hidden by clothing or equipment. 
If a penetrating eye injury is noted or suspected, cover the eye with a rigid eye shield and administer 400 milligrams of moxifloxin from the combat wound medication pack. Splint any fractures found on the casualty as splinting of fractures can result in significant pain relief and minimize bleeding. Make sure to document all assessments, treatments, and changes in status on a TC3 card. Once the tactical trauma assessment is complete, you must prepare the casualty for evacuation by performing the following steps. Complete and secure the TC3 card, the DD-1380, to the casualty. Secure all loose bandages, equipment, blankets, etc. Secure your litter straps as required. Consider additional padding for long evacuations. Provide instructions to ambulatory patients as needed. Stage your casualties for evacuation and identify litter teams. And finally, always maintain security at the evacuation point. And always remember to reassess your casualty to make sure their condition has not changed and the treatments used remain in place and effective.